guys, in this video we're going to run through an introduction to solving linear equations and build up to solving such equations as these two bad boys sat here. So a linear equation is any equation where the highest power of your letter is 1. So you've only got an equation, say, in terms of x. There's no x squared or x cubed. So, let's get going. So, when solving equations, we're trying to find the value of the unknown letter. Now, it's not always x, but in this video, we are just going to be using x to keep things a bit simpler. So, the aim of the game is if we have x on one side of an equation, it's going to be either getting multiplied or divided by a number. There's going to be numbers being added or subtracted to and from it. We want to chip away all of that and end up with just a little x sat on his own on one side of an equal sign and a number sat on the other side. Now, probably the most golden of golden rules in maths is when we're playing algebra, whatever we do on one side of an equation, we absolutely have to do on the other side. You can think of an equal sign as a pivot with a set of scales. When you're given an equation, that set of scales is uh, completely in balance. If we were to take something off of one side and not the other side, then that side is going to become lighter and the scales will become unbalanced. The same again if we were to put something on one side and not on the other, that side is then going to get heavier than the other side and the scales are going to be knocked out of balance again. So we have to keep the scale is in balance. Okay, so if we run through the basics. So to move things from one side of an equal sign to the other, so from one side of an equation to the other, we carry out the opposite operation. Uh, now that's not as complicated as it sounds, so let's run through what we mean. Say that we've got this equation here, x plus 3 equals 10. And to move that 3, we need to do the opposite operation uh, to its sign. So if it's a plus 3, the opposite of a plus is a minus. So to move the 3, we minus it from both sides. Now the way that I write down my instructions, I put them in brackets at the side. So this minus 3 in green to the right is a little instruction. I'm telling you what I'm doing there. Uh, some people like to write the instructions underneath the equation. It's completely up to you. So when we take away that 3, the 3 on the left completely disappears, which is the whole point. And then on the right, we do 10, take away 3, which then leaves us with 7. And we have then solved that equation, x is equal to 7. On the flip side, if we start with an equation like x minus 9, and again, the opposite of subtraction is to add. So to move that minus 9, we add 9 to both sides. So the minus 9 on the left completely disappears. And then on the right, we do 5 plus 9, which gives us that 14 there. So again, that equation is solved. x is equal to 14. Now, in algebra, whenever you've got a number sat next to a letter with no signs between them, it means that number times the letter. So 4x here means 4 times x. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So to cancel out a multiplication, we divide. <coughs> we divide by the number multiplying the x. So here to move the 4... We divide by 4, and that leaves us with x equals 8 divided by 4, which is 2. And again, on the flip side, if you're given a question like this, like uh, I see this cause problems a lot, remember that fractions are a division. We're saying the top number divided by the bottom number. So x over 3 is saying, saying x divided by 3. Now, the opposite of division is multiplication, so to cancel out the division, we multiply by the number on the bottom of the fraction. So we would then get x equals 9 times 3, which is 27. 
Okay, now let's smash it all together and solve some two-step equations. Okay, here we go then. So, some examples of solving two-step equations. So, here we've got 2x minus 5 equals 1, and we want to solve it for x. Now, what we always want to do is move this guy first of all. So, the number that has absolutely nothing to do with our x term, we always move him first. So, if that's a minus 5, to move him to the other side, we're going to add 5. So, that's going to give us 2x on the left is equal to 1 plus 5 on the right which is 6. So now we've got 2 times our number is equal to 6. Now the opposite of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2. And if we divide 6 by 2, we're going to get x equals 3. Now equations on this kind of maths is nice because it allows you to check that your answer is right. If we substitute that value of x, into the equation, then uh, it has to work. So, what I mean by that, if we put x equals 3 into 2x minus 5, we should get 1. So let's try it. 2 times 3 would be 6. 6 minus 5 gives us the 1. So we know we're right. Okay, example 2. 4x plus 5 equals 14. So again, well, we start with this bit. So the opposite of plus 5 is to subtract 5. That's going to leave us with 4x equals 14 minus 5, which is 9. Okay, so we've got 4 times our number is equal to 9. The opposite of multiplying by 4 is to divide by 4. Now you might be thinking here, well, we're not going to get a very nice answer because 4 doesn't go into 9. However, that's not really anything to worry about because unless a question specifically asks for your answer uh, to decimal places, then we're perfectly fine to leave that as a fraction. So 9 over 4. And in fact, when you get up into higher maps and stuff, we actually much prefer to use fractions rather than decimals. As a decimal, just to cover our bases, that would be 2.25. Okay, let's crack on with the next one. 3x add 13 equals minus 5. So we've got negative numbers kicking around here. Let's not get too worried about it. So again, we want to move this part first. So we're going to take away 13. Because it's the opposite of adding 13, that is going to leave us with 3x equals now minus 5 minus 13 is going to take us down to minus 18. Okay, and then we need to sort out that 3 on the x, so we divide by 3 and we get x equals now at minus 18 divided by 3 is going to give us minus 6. So again we can check our answer. 3 times minus 6 would be minus 18. Minus 18 add 13 would indeed bring us back up to minus 5. Happy days! Okay so this one might be looking quite unfriendly because of all the negative signs we've got going on. Uh, but let's just play it as we've played it so far. So add to 6 And that's going to leave us with minus 8x equals 48. Now what we can do here, because we've got minus x equals positive 48. Whenever you've got this situation, a minus sign can swap sides. So we can happily here write 8x equals minus 48. So what we're doing in that step, we're either multiplying or dividing both sides by minus 1. But you don't really need to think of it like that. Just think of it as a cheeky little trick. It only works 
if you have one positive term and one negative term on opposite sides of an equal sign. Okay, so now we've got 8x equals minus 48. So if we divide by 8, we're going to get x equals minus 6. Jobs are good. Okay, the next example. 9x add 3 equals 18. So as always, we're going to start by moving that guy. So that's going to leave us with 9x equals 15. And then if we divide by the 9, again, 9 isn't going to go into 15, but we can happily leave it as a fraction. So we get 15 over 9. But we really should simplify that. So we've got a common factor between the top and the bottom of 3. So up on top, 15 divided by 3 will give us 5. And on the bottom, 9 divided by 3 will give us 3. So we can write 15 ninths as 5 over 3. So there we can say x is equal to 5 thirds. Okay, so now we're looking at equations with divisions of x in them. So let's see how we go with these. So again, we want to sort out this bit first. So the opposite of a minus 5 is to add 5, and that will leave us with x over 6 is equal to 4 plus 5, which is 9. Now remember, x over 6 is saying x divided by 6. So to cancel the, uh, the division, we multiply by 6, and that will leave us with x is equal to 50. Four. 6 times 9 is 54. Let's try it. If we substitute in x equals 54, we're going to get 54 divided by 6, which is 9, minus 5 is indeed 4. Happy days. Okay, x over 2, add 3 equals minus 1. So let's move the 3. So take away 3. That's going to leave us with x over 2 is equal to minus 1, minus 3 is minus 4. And then we've got x divided by 2, so we multiply by 2, and that scooches the 2 over to the other side. So 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. Jobs are good. Em. X over 9 minus 7 equals 12. So let's sort out the 7. So we're going to add 7. And that's going to give us X over 9 equals. Now 12 add 7 is 19. And then we need to multiply 19 by 9. Which is going to give us x is equal to 171. Beauty. Okay, x over 10 minus 5 equals 0. So let's add 5. Then we're going to get x over 10 is equal to 0 plus 5 is 5. And then we want to multiply by that 10. And we'll get x is equal to 50. Jobs are good. Em. Okay, guys, last example for this video then. So x over 5 plus 1 half equals 1. Don't be scared by the fact we've got a fraction here. Treat it exactly the same way that we've been doing them so far. So we're going to subtract the 1 half. That's going to leave us with x over 5 on the right. 1 minus 1 half is equal to 1 half. And then we've got x divided by 5 equals a half. So to move the 5, we multiply by it. And that's going to give us x equals... Now if we do 5 times 1 half, think of that as having 5 halves of a pizza. Then we can just say we've got 5 halves. If you wanted to turn that into a decimal... 
then it would be 2.5. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with fractions whatsoever. Okay guys, so that's that for this video. Be sure to check out part 2 where we're going to go over how to attack 3 step bad boys such as these 3 sat here. Cheers!